What's up everyone? Welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I've got some tips and tricks that you can use to help you get more out of your new iPhone. Let's get started. To start things off, let's go over some of the access features that you have on your lock screen as well as some of the passcode and face ID features that are built into the phone. So we'll open our settings application here and we're going to tap on the face ID and passcode. We'll be prompted to enter that in. And this is where you can allow face ID to be used for different applications. But what we want to look at is this option, the setup alternative appearance. If you have a phone that's shared or you want to have your spouse or loved ones be able to access your phone with their face, you can add a second face or maybe you just have different expressions or maybe you wear hats or anything. You can set that up so that it works a little bit better with a second appearance. Scrolling down a little bit, there's also require attention for face ID. What this does is it ensures that your eyes are locked in on the camera and that it sees that they're open and you have attention before it tries to unlock it. However, some sunglasses don't work with this on. So if you turn it off and you're wearing sunglasses, it's not going to wait for you to give it attention. It's just going to unlock when it recognizes your face. It's going to be a little bit less secure, but it's going to help if you have sunglasses that are causing a problem. Scrolling down a little bit more, you can change your passcode or turn it off. The reason we're going to look at this is not necessarily to change it, but because there's other passcode options and that's right there. By default, you have the six digit passcode that you're prompted to set up. If we tap passcode options, we have three that we can choose from. The old style four digit passcode, which allows you to just use four digits or the more secure alphanumeric passcode that you can set up, which allows you to use your full keyboard to create a much longer and more secure password. So keep that in mind if you wanna go back. Scrolling down a little bit more, you have the allow access when locked option, and this I strongly recommend you set this up before you start using your phone to avoid any issues. So for example, with our phone locked, when we try to unlock it, we can access things like our control center and notification center and things like that, which means anybody who gets access to the phone will be able to do that. So from our face ID and passcode settings, if we turn off the control center option here, if we lock our phone and try to unlock it, now if anybody tries to access our control center, they won't be able to. And it works the same with any one of these options. Next up is a dark mode and dark mode on different applications is becoming extremely popular. So again, we're going to open our settings application. I'll just show you how it looks. We'll tap general and we're going to tap accessibility. From here, we want to scroll down. We're going to scroll pretty much to the bottom and what we're going to tap is accessibility shortcuts. Now this is going to give you some options that are going to allow you to set up a triple click on the side button to activate it. Tap on the smart invert colors, you'll see a check mark. And now anytime we triple click on the lock button, it's going to turn it into this really nice dark mode. And this is great for reading. You can see how nice it looks in the settings application. So if you're reading a document or it's night, you might want to turn it on. It gives you that nice dark mode. And to turn it off, you just triple click and you're back to the standard mode. The next tip involves 3D touch and if you never heard of it or don't know how to use it, all you're doing is pressing with some force on things on the iPhone and it's going to give you extra options. However, this might be a little bit annoying, especially if you're trying to delete applications. Deleting, you have to hold and not press, but it's hard sometimes. So if you want to disable 3D touch or control how hard you're pressing, open your settings application, tap general once again. We're going to tap accessibility and this time we're going to scroll down to where it says 3D touch. It's on by default, but you can set it up so that it works with a light press or a more firm press, which may help if you're having issues deleting applications. Or you can turn that feature off completely and you won't have to worry about it at all. Next is a digital home button. If you miss the home button on your previous iPhones, you can add a digital button here. We'll open our settings once again, but this time let's pull down to access our settings search bar. If you're ever looking for any setting and you don't know where it is, you can simply type in the description. It'll always pull it up. So assistive touch is what this one's called. If we start typing it in, you'll see it'll pop up. We can tap on the first one. It's going to let us know 
that's where it is. So let's tap on assistive touch. And when we turn this on, it's going to create a digital home button, very similar to what we had with the older iPhones, except it's not going to be a physical button. Now you can set up what the single tap on the home button is going to do. And by default, it's set to open menu, but we can set it to home. When we do that, Whenever we're in an application, for example, we can just tap on it and it's going to take us back just like our home button used to do. And you can move it around anywhere you want and it'll always be available to you. For those of you who miss the percentage on the battery icon, it's still available. However, you have to access it a little bit different. Simply pull down to the control center and you'll see the percentage icon is now available there. Unfortunately, you can't access it any other way on the main screen. This next tip could potentially save your life. Knock on wood, we hope nothing ever happens like that. But if we open the health app and we look at the medical ID section here, and if we tap edit, we can add all of our medical information here, name, date of birth, any medical conditions we might have or allergies to different medications. We can do our blood type, all kinds of information can be added here. So for example, I just put in some basic things and now how it works, if an accident or an emergency happens, emergency staff is trained to know how to access the phone. So what happens is they'll be able to tap this a little emergency option at the bottom. And if they look, there's medical ID at the bottom left. When they tap on that, they'll get all of that information and they'll be able to help you a lot faster based on the situation. So especially if you do have medical conditions or interactions with different drugs, definitely set this up in the health app under the medical ID section. The next tip is to record the screen of your phone. So if you wanna create videos of what's on your phone or anything like that, you can do so. So what we need to do first is tap on settings. From here, we're gonna scroll down a little bit and we're gonna tap on the control center option. There's an option that says customize controls, which is going to allow you to add a whole bunch of different applications to your control center. By default, you have these four up here. What we're gonna do is add the option to record our screen. So we'll tap on the plus on screen recording and now it's going to be added at the top. When we pull down our control center, you'll now see this little option, which is our screen recorder. When we tap on it, you'll see a countdown and you'll see a red icon appear at the top left. This means it's recording and it's gonna record everything that's going on. So if I'm swiping back and forth and when I wanna stop, I simply tap on it and press stop. It automatically saves it to our photos. We can open it up here. This is how it started. We can click play. If we tap, we can even scroll ahead. Let's scroll here and we'll play it. And you can see that it's recorded everything I did on screen. So if you wanna record your screen, that's how you do it. The next tip is kind of cool and I get asked about it all the time. It's LED notifications. I'll show you how it works, but let's set it up first. So we'll tap settings once again, and we're gonna tap general and accessibility. From here, we're gonna scroll down to where it says LED flash for alerts, and we're gonna tap on that. We're gonna turn it on and there's gonna be two options. First one is just simply going to turn it on and off and the second one is going to allow it to flash when it's on silent. And traditionally I'll use it with the flash on silent. So now that we have it set up, what it's gonna do when we receive any calls or any kind of notifications, we should be able to see it flash on the camera. So I'm just gonna give myself a call here. And now you can see it's flashing on screen. So this is great, especially if you use your phone on silent and you don't want it to make any noise or vibrate or anything, you can have it flash and you'll have that LED notification. This next tip involves our photos application. So we'll open it up here and we'll just take a look at this photo I took earlier. If you ever take a photo and you're not happy with how it came out, there are options that you can actually modify with. Assuming the photo was taken in live mode, which is by default how your camera will be set up, you have this little option at the bottom, which you can then move the key photo around and use any one of those live photos. So for example, you can see the main photo I took, I was blinking, if I move across at the bottom, I can find the one I like, tap make key photo, tap done, and now the photo is the way I want it. Additionally, when you open your camera app, you can turn that live on and off, very simple like so. But let's take a look at the new portrait mode features as well. So I'll flip it to the front facing camera here and now you can see me. 
You have all the traditional usages here, the stage light, natural light, and so on. So I'll just take a quick photo. And if we tap on it and tap edit, there's an option at the bottom to control the depth and that's the blur you're seeing in the background. So we can turn it off completely, pretty much bringing it to the standard look, or we can really blur out that background all the way. You can see that almost everything is blurred out behind me. So you can really get that professional looking photo and you can control it based on the setting you're in to make it look awesome. So that is it for this video, but obviously there are thousands and thousands of things that you can do and learn with your new iPhone. If you want to see more, definitely subscribe to the channel, hit that notification icon to be notified when I post new videos. Also, let me know in the comments what you want to see or what you want more of, and I'll definitely push that content out for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.